Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Today we will be covering the Northwest Dayton Partnerships Community Investment Fund informational session. We will review who Learn to Earn Dayton is, provide background information on the Northwest Dayton Partnership, and review components of the application process for the Community Investment Fund. This session again is pre recorded. There will be a live question and answer session following this recording. We will also place the recorded version of this informational session on the frequently asked questions page for the Northwest Dayton Partnership grant website. Learn to Earn Dayton is a place-based partnership and Strive Together affiliate that will act as the backbone to coordinate and align this investment. Learn to Earn Dayton works in the cradle to career education and workforce space and have been recognized as a Strive Together proof point. The Strive Together Cradle to Career Network supports communities across the country to eliminate disparities and change the outcomes for children. Proof point status signifies improved results for children through an organization's ability to collectively focus on shared outcomes and implement effective policies and practices. Learn to Earn Dayton has a big goal. By 2025, 60% of working adults will have a college degree or high quality post-secondary credential within Montgomery County. This is important to us because we understand that today's jobs require education after high school. In order to meet this big goal, we must make progress across many indicators, including closing gaps within zip codes, racial and ethnic groups. This catalytic investment allows Learn to Earn to deepen its efforts across the cradle to career continuum while using a whole family approach in its Northwest Dayton partnership efforts. Here are the co-applicants mentioned in our, in our original grant application. Here you will notice a few community anchors mentioned in our original grant application. The Northwest Dayton Partnership seeks to achieve scale through debt, which requires cross-sector collaboration to leverage community assets that represent not only different perspectives, but also essential components toward catalyzing mobility and equity. Out of this collective effort, the Northwest Dayton Partnership geographical areas were defined. We should note that in comparison to other place-based initiatives, this is considered a small community area. The steering committee is currently made up of five members. Chad Sloss, Cheryl Garrett, Geraldine Pegues, Loretta Williams, and Sharon Tace. The steering committee began meeting in May of 2021 and have approved a series of initiatives from this fall, which were a part of the original application. Next, I will describe the work occurring within those initiatives. Preschool Promise is currently convening early learning leaders from the Northwest Dayton Partnership boundary areas to collaboratively plan across these efforts. The goal is to expand access to high quality early childhood education while also implementing a wage equity pilot to increase wages for preschool teachers while improving retention and quality. Additionally, the Northwest Dayton Partnership is also providing support for an existing project in partnership with Dayton Public Schools. 
The goal is to improve quality K-12 education at selected sites. Currently, those sites include Fairview Pre-K-6, E.J. Brown Middle School, Thurgood Marshall High School, Wagaman Middle School, and it also includes Rosa Parks Learning Center. Lastly, within the grant application, we noted that the Northwest State in partnership would support the catalytic investments occurring through Omega CDC's two generation supportive services as part of their new Hope Center for Families. This place-based approach uses a two generation lens by ensuring that the whole child receives supports and services including the adults in their lives. For the first time, Learn to Earn is embarking on a journey to regrant re funds directly in the community on a large scale. It's an opportunity to engage in a deeper way with community-based organizations. For this first community investment fund, Learn to Earn Dayton is seeking meaningful proposals that address critical needs, but also seeks to support small and local nonprofit organizations with building capacity in order to accomplish set outcomes in a limited time frame. For you, the type of fund proposals in which Learn to Earn is seeking to support. As previously mentioned, high quality early childhood education, supporting public K-12 schools that serve students' academic and social needs, increasing place-based community re revitalization activities, as well as racial equity and economic mobility opportunities are core focuses for the Community Investment Fund. Learn to Earn Dayton is hoping to find proposals that seek to address economic status, social factors, access to quality food and healthcare, educational attainment, and built environment. Examples may include purchasing reading books for young children while implementing a reading program, providing quality after-school programs for students across the K-12 continuum, programs or services that address maternal and infant well-being, programs that educate and train youth and residents on community organizing or community engagement models, two-generation programs that serve the whole child, including the adults in their lives. Learn to Earn Dayton would like to focus on efforts that address racial disparities in educational attainment, employment training, prosperity, health and well-being, which may limit a person's ability to improve their economic status. Other types of proposals that will be supported include internal capacity building. The intent is to ensure deeply connected organizations have access to the resources needed to actualize results within Northwest Dayton. Finally, Learn to Earn Dayton is seeking to support proposals that focus on partnerships and collaboration. Applicants should consider how it currently engages its stakeholders and partners in co-designing solutions that align efforts within Northwest Dayton. It's important to note that authentically centering community voice in the development of partnerships and strategies are proposals of interest. In regards to the current COVID-19 pandemic, Learn to Earn Dayton seeks to provide support that is responsive to the community's needs, which are necessary to provide relief to adversely impacted populations. This funding is intended to support 
community-based 501c3 nonprofits. Learn to Earn Dayton and the Northwest Dayton Partnership are interested in funding applicants, especially those deeply connected within the community or neighborhood organizations that are not likely to receive funding through other channels. Nonprofits without a 501c3 status may apply with a fiscal agent. For this grant application, a fiscal agent is defined as a nonprofit organization that is tax exempt under the IRS code section 501c3. The fiscal agent must agree to accept and be responsible for grant funds on your behalf. Public agencies, including higher educational institutions, government entities, and schools would not be eligible. This is the eligibility quiz, and this is the first step in your application process. It's due by January 28th. The quiz lets us know um, how many agencies will respond um, so that we can know how many uh, individual community residents or community stakeholder panelists uh, to recruit to review your application. And the quiz also lets us understand that you are familiar with the requirements and have answered uh, those questions. So let's go to the clip here real quick. Um, if you're on the main page or home page, you go to um, where the grant guidelines are released or the grant section, you go to the eligibility quiz and you go to job forms where the quiz is completed and you enter information about your organization and contact information. You can see I already had these saved in my browser, uh, but you can just type those in and uh, you keep clicking next and then you're going to come to a series of questions and you're going to check uh, your answers to each one of those questions. If you need to save your eligibility quiz, you go down to the bottom and you click uh, save. They will ask you if you want to create an account. You're going to click no for creating an account um, and that's at the very bottom of the um, dialog box or pop-up. And uh, when you click skip, uh, creating an uh, account, um, it'll take you where you just enter your uh, email address and then they will send you a link to save. And this is the same procedure on the actual application. For agencies that would like to request more than 150,000, we are requesting that you email us at northwest at learntoearndayton.org and that address is in the RFP. Um, we want to have a meeting to understand the scope and uh, the budget that you're proposing and the type of work that you're doing. Uh, the funding is limited and we do not believe there will be many agencies funded above the $150,000 level. We wanted a uh, request for proposals uh, with grants given out that um, you know, provided a lot of services and included uh, smaller community-based organizations as well. You must request the meeting by January 28th. Just let us know before January 28th also if you have any computer access issues. So if you don't believe you can uh, be able to fill out an application online and need assistance, uh, please let us know uh, before January 28th. If your grant is going to be small or less than $5,000, so that's the minimum, um, and you want to request funds, you should partner with other organizations. And in general, we're supporting collaborative um, efforts that allow for partnerships. 
And Nina talked a little bit about after school and um, educational um, programming. Those were just examples. And we want to emphasize that um, we want you to collaborate so that you're not proposing an after school program at a school that already has such a program. Um, and in all cases, we really want to encourage collaboration rather than competition. The Northwest Dayton Grant website has information that will be very helpful for individuals interested in writing grants who are maybe new to grant writing. So we're going to click on the video and it's going to show us where the grant writing um, hints page is. And this provides an introduction to grant writing and gives some information on grant writing basics. It uh, talks about needs and how to report needs and ways to discuss your program. Uh, talks about evidence-based strategies and programs. And at the bottom of their page, uh, there's links for budget and evaluation information. We'll cover those in more detail later. But let's go to the community plan page because that's helpful in discussing the needs. So community plans have um, information on strategy and statistics and other data that would be helpful. Here we're looking at the city of Dayton's uh, vision for uh, the Northwest Dayton area. So it is very helpful information that be, could be useful in writing your application. Montgomery County has information about the strategies based upon population and issues uh, that would be helpful for understanding uh, the context for planning in the county. There's information from public health on uh, needs and um, a variety of population indicators that would be helpful to you in writing your grant. And there's even information about individual school buildings and we'll cover that in our next slide. So as we were talking before, we were on the resources tab of the grant website that you can reach either from the grant hints or directly from the website. And let's click on this uh, video and we're going to talk about information that's available in the individual's school buildings or regarding the individual school buildings. So here's um, information on indicators, achievement results, um, there's also uh, information on enrollment that may be helpful to you in writing a grant. Um, this just gives an overview and it does not include all the information. If you would like more information, you can go to Google and enter Ohio School Report Cards. And that will take you to a place where you can search for individual districts or individual buildings for more information. It also has resources to find statistics from on community needs from the United Way of Greater Dayton and also has census information. So we're clicking once again. Um, this is in the needs section. You can see the wonderful resources that we have from United Way. And those are also available on the resource tab on the plan. So here you see information from 211. And you can search this by zip code. So you can enter 45405, which is one of the zips in the Dayton Northwest area, and uh, select that and search. And you can see uh, service requests um, in housing and unmet needs and a variety of other uh, resources. And you can search by food and, and different uh, service requests. Here is the census data. This is uh, 2019 uh, American Community Service information. We don't have all the 2020 census uh, results yet. So this provides some demographic information and you can click on uh, the links on the topics um, or you also can search by different uh, geographies. 
So that's a, a source for statistics around uh, the demographics of the population in the area that you want to serve. Agencies to consider using evidence-based uh, strategies. Evidence-based strategies are techniques or instructional methods or curriculum or program designs where an evaluation has been done so that you know in uh, specific communities, maybe with similar populations, that these um, programs or interventions have been successful. And typically these are based upon randomized control trials or quasi-experimental trials. And here's an example. We use Passport to Literacy, which is a supplemental uh, program that's been successful. To help you with your grant application, we're giving you clearing houses across the nation and here in Ohio where you can find information about um, wonderful programs that have had uh, studies completed. So the California Clearing House has information about family programs, uh, child intervention, uh, social emotional programs that have been successful and have studies showing their effectiveness. The Higher Department of Education has evidence-based clearinghouse uh, data, um, and you can see uh, that link uh, before you. And also the um, information on that site is um, about instructional strategies um, as well as youth development. And then we have another site, Social Programs at Work, um, and that is a site that you might want to go to that has evidence-based uh, programs that have been successful, and those include like nurse family partnerships and a variety of other programs. So those are just some resources that you might want to consider. Evaluation component is a very important part of the grant, as you read above. We're all about uh, results, and we're looking at that not in a punitive way, but wanting you to be excited about looking at your data, not just at the end of the program, but throughout the program, and talking about your data with your staff, with your consumers, clients, community, um, and looking at on a monthly basis or a regular basis, on how you can change your results. So what's going well, what's not going well, and how you can continuously improve. Looking at organizations that feel comfortable uh, sharing their results on an ongoing basis and want to continue um, improving. Just some examples of uh, student outcomes. These are outcomes that uh, Learn to Earn has been looking at and are about our efforts to improve uh, results. And so these are some of the data areas uh, that we are examining. So we'll get 55% increase in industry recognized credentials opponents and a, another increase at the Paul Lawrence uh, Dunbar Early High School. Uh, we saw a decrease in discipline referrals by 20% and chronically absent students, 50% Dayton Early College Academy. So these are just examples of very measurable outcomes that are student focused. We're really looking at organizations, as we said before, that are interested in partnering around improving results. We have some information here on the website. I think that'll be helpful for you as you think about your evaluation. Uh, it talks about uh, why measure uh, evaluation, talks about logic models with inputs, outputs, and outcomes, and defines all those. We have resources from the Kellogg's Foundation around logic models. And logic models are an, 
really wonderful way to plan for grants so you know the resources that you bring to the table, you know the activities or interventions that you want to um, provide to the community, how many people you might serve, and then you look at the outcomes associated with those. So if you're not that familiar with logic models, this is a wonderful resource for you. SMART um, goals and indicators um, are um, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time defined or bound. And so this is um, an example of different um, SMART goals and objectives. This is from First Nations uh, Development Institute, and they have a lot of uh, resources that might be helpful for you to read. Download and, and save these documents and share them with others, um, if you wish, in your group. And so in talking about outcomes, we have another step-by-step uh, -step guide. Uh, again, this is from uh, Kellogg's, I believe. And uh, this is information about how to uh, set up an evaluation. Uh, so if you haven't done a lot of evaluation work before, this is a wonderful uh, resource for you. And also, we talk a little bit about uh, continuous quality improvement. We talked about that before. That's a process of regularly using your data, analyzing it, and brainstorming about what's working, what's not working, uh, developing a plan and implementing that plan, and then going back and measuring it again. So it's a continuous cycle. There's a video there that you can uh, watch. And we're also interested in implementation science. And uh, that's a process of um, whenever you uh, are implementing a particular intervention, gain buy-in from the teachers or the case managers or the family coaches, and uh, working together to make sure that the interventions are acceptable to individuals, that they bought into them, and um, that um, you're getting effective results, and you're looking at the fidelity to the instrument. So that's a, that's a wonderful video that you can watch. Uh, they all have little commercials before the video, uh, but that's a downside of uh, free videos. So that's a resource for you. We also included on the website information about budgets for grants and sample narratives. And so um, I'm going to click on this uh, resource and you can go to where you see the, the budget uh, page. It gives you an introduction, talks about revenues and expenses, uh, gives some information about that, talks about the connection between your budget and the project. So it should really feel to the reviewers that the budget really is uh, very consistent with the program description. Gave you a sample budget. Uh, this is not a template. You don't have to use this, but this is just an example of how one might describe um, the cost and what was the basis for the cost. And you can download this if you wish. Um, so this uh, would be something that you can use. Um, but certainly not uh, mandatory in any way, shape, or form. And so if you go here uh, to the main grants page, you'll also see that there is a budget form uh, that you could use that shows uh, it is a template. Um, so if you don't have a standard budget that you use for grants, uh, this is one that you could use that has a revenues and pending and committed resources, talks about personnel expenses and uh, those kind of expenses, talks about direct and uh, administrative overhead, um, and all these line items uh, add up. But once you um, change uh, the amounts, like if you write in there and don't let it calculate itself, um, 
you will remove those uh, calculations. So once again, you can use your own budget. Um, we are not suggesting that you have to use ours. And for small organizations, their organizational budget may be their project budget as well. And we're going to the actual application. So when you click on uh, the video uh, link here, we're taken to the application. And you get this link when you um, start your eligibility uh, quiz. Be sure that you save the link. We've had people that have uh, not saved the link. And here you can download the RFP if you haven't um, already downloaded it and read it on the um, grant uh, website. Here's the um, questions on the application, the name of your project. In this case, we're writing my project. And then I'm filling in um, my name and the legal name of the organization, which is ABC Agency. And the amount that I'm uh, requesting, and um, I'm requesting $5,000, whoops, $5,000. And we go to the next, and I'm putting in the address of our organization, which just happens to be Learn to Earn's address. And then Jane Doe um, is our uh, CEO of ABC uh, Agency. And then we provide uh, information, and I'm just going to put in uh, the regular number for Learn to Earn. And um, the Jane Doe uses my email. And here's the tax number. This is a, a tax number that you get from um, the federal government. I'm not using a fiscal agent because I'm a nonprofit, so all this information is left blank. I have the opportunity, and actually it's required, to write a one to three sentence abstract. I also uh, can download, um, again, the information about the proposal um, content. And this is the framework that I would use as I'm answering the questions. And I sometimes think it's helpful to use each one of these as your headers as you answer them or just make sure that you're addressing all of these issues uh, in your five-page response. And this information is in the RFP as well. So you are writing your narrative in Word or another format. You can save it as a Word document or a, a PDF and upload it here. I'm We'll tell you that you can save. You can see on the screen here on each um, page, there's a save button. It's in uh, the center of the page at the bottom. If you click on that, it will take you to a place where they ask you to create an account. Um, we're suggesting that you don't create an account because it actually will keep you from being able to progress with saving your organizations information so just go to the bottom and hit uh, skip create account and then that will take you to a page where you can enter your email and then you will uh, receive a link that has your saved application click on that link and uh, the or when you receive the email you can click on that link and be able to return to your application. And now we're going to go to the next slide where we're going to talk about attaching the um, other documents required. A look at some of the um, information you can upload. Here I'm uploading um, some tax information. This needs to be my uh, tax exempt form either my own as an organization, or it needs to be the um, fiscal agent. Also entering um, a proposed budget, a 990. Um, so here is uh, the budget template. 
And I also want to add uh, the Excel file that has my uh, budget as well. So actually, I uploaded the, the Excel file first. And then I had uh, uploaded the narrative. And as you see down here, I've entered the narrative twice. So I want to remove one of those. And so I'm going to show you how you remove that. Just click on the arrow and it will allow you to click it again and remove it. Here's showing the save. You don't want to sign up via Google, Facebook, or email. Go to the bottom um, and you can skip that section. This is information on the 990, and we're going to upload this information. So I know where my 990 is, so I can just search by 990 and browse and upload. If you're requesting money for construction budget above 50,000, you can upload there. I am not. You have to upload your demographic information. Uh, this is a way to understand um, how inclusive your agency is, and then you get to review and submit your application. You have to submit your application. Um, otherwise, it's going to be in cyberspace, and we are not going to receive it. So submit. You see, please wait. And then you should see a thank you uh, note that your submission has been received. Okay, this is just another reminder. These are all the dates. January 28th, last day for the eligibility quiz. Last day to request a meeting if you're asking over 150,000. Last day to inform us of computer issues. February 25th, the grant is due at 4 p.m. Up next, in this section, we will describe the community review panel process. Learn to Earn Dayton seeks to implement a participatory grant making process, which includes community residents and community stakeholders in the process of reviewing grant applications to ensure that those deeply connected community organizations receive the opportunity to receive the supports necessary to implement, expand, and deepen their work. The recruitment of community review panelists will take place after the eligibility quiz closes. The announcement of panelists will be shared after the application closes. The review panel uh, process will be transparent in which Learn to Earn Dayton on behalf of the Northwest Dayton Partnership will release an information or interest form in order to recruit community residents and stakeholders interested in participating in the process. One final reminder, please use the rubric that is included in the RFP package. That rubric is a set of criteria that the community review panelists will utilize as they review and score applications. We thank you so much for your time today, and we're looking forward to answering your questions in regards to the submission of your application. Thank you for attending. We will put this information on the website from the session, and we very much appreciate your interest in the Community Investment Fund. Thank you.